trail maintenance is the only way to protect trail capital investment dollars and the adjacent natural resource. Trail maintenance objectives can be accomplished with established trail maintenance crews or Adopt-A-Trail volunteers. In either case, these workers need to be familiar with the individual trail management objectives since all trails are not assigned the same level of maintenance. All crews should have a work leader who is familiar with current host agency trail maintenance specifications. Trail maintenance can be divided into two types. One, routine, and two, heavy. Routine trail maintenance can be easily accomplished with volunteers. Heavy trail maintenance should be accomplished with experienced volunteers or forest service crews, since trail work that isn't performed according to specifications can result in resource damage. Six things need to be accomplished during routine trail maintenance. They are, one, windfall trees are removed from the trail tread. Two, rocks that have fallen onto the trail tread are removed. Three, existing drainage structures are cleaned and maintained. Four, brush and limbs that intrude into the trail are removed according to the trail's management objectives. Five, switchback barriers are repaired or enlarged to prevent further cutting. Six, the overall condition of the trail is monitored and findings are reported to the host agency. First priority should be given to the removal of trees that have blown down across the trail. In warm, arid regions, these logs can be sawn at any time of the year. However, in cold snow regions, logs should be removed as soon as the snow is gone in the spring. Logs left in the trail will force hikers and horsemen to find other routes around the tree. In soft, wet soils, these new trails can lead to resource damage. In designated wilderness, crews will have to use hand tools, such as bow saws, axes, or crosscut saws for blown down removal. Outside wilderness, chainsaws can be used. Small diameter trees can be cut into lengths no shorter than eight feet and removed to a location below the trail. An eight foot section, four feet each side of the trail center line can be cut from the large diameter trees and the remaining trunks left in place. If vegetation permits, all limbs and trunk sections should be hidden from sight below the trail to give the trail a more natural appearance. Logs should be placed flat on the ground and perpendicular to the trail tread. Small loose rocks that have fallen onto the trail can be removed with a shovel. Large rocks may require a pry bar to move them off the trail or may have to be broken up with a sledgehammer. Slide rocks off the trail rather than rolling them and make sure that no one is below you before doing rock work. If metal culvert pipes or rock drains have been constructed to drain water under the trail, they should be cleaned out to ensure good drainage. If rocks have fallen down into the upper inlet, clean them out to restore drainage. If erosion is occurring where water comes out of the pipe or drain, flat rocks can be placed below the outlet to reduce the scouring action of the water. If log or rock water bars have been constructed along the trail, remove any dirt that might be accumulated on the uphill side so that water will be turned off the trail by the structure. Dirt removed from the upper side can be deposited on the lower side of the log or rock structure and compacted into place. If the outer edge of the water bar log is loose, a large flat rock can be placed on top of it to anchor it firmly against the ground. Water should not be able to flow under the log. When the water bar log has rotted out or the rock water bar is scattered, make a note of the location and include information about the damaged water bar in a trail condition report for the host agency. 
Not all trails will have the same management objectives, so you'll need to know if the trail is to be maintained for a primitive experience or for horsemen and hikers. When brush is removed from the trail, the individual limbs should be cut or clipped off as close to the ground as possible. Avoid leaving sharp, pointed ends. When limbs are removed from trees, the limb should be undercut with a saw before cutting so that the bark doesn't tear from the weight of the cut limb. Don't use axes for limbing trees or large scars will result. Trees should be evenly limbed all the way around to avoid a one-sided or haircut look. Remove all trimmed material from the trail and dispose of it below or out of sight of the trail if vegetation permits. Place branches flat on the ground, not in piles, to facilitate decomposition. After a trail has been carefully cleared and limbed, it should have a natural look that is free of cut material and unnecessary tree scars. Switchbacks are usually high maintenance structures since some hikers cut across them. If steep trails are appearing at the ends of switchback barriers, they may have to be filled with rocks and brush to reduce erosion and discourage continued cutting. If rocks or logs have been knocked off barriers, they should be replaced and the barrier strengthened. If a water bar is part of the structure, it should be cleaned and repaired. The entire length of the trail should be hiked before high seasonal use begins in order to determine its overall condition. Areas of extensive trail or structure damage should be noted on a map. Areas where signing is damaged or needed should be included on the map. Volunteer groups can provide excellent assistance to host agencies by monitoring trail conditions throughout the year. Safety is an important aspect of any trail work. Experienced trail workers must be as careful as the novice. Group leaders should review the potential hazards of each job site with the workers. When hiking into a job site with hand tools, workers should be at least five feet behind the person in front of them. All work tools, when not in use, should be secured above the trail tread so that they are not underfoot or lost in trail debris. All workers should wear gloves and boots, no soft canvas shoes. If a sledgehammer is used to remove rock from the trail, the worker must wear a hard hat, gloves, and goggles. Other workers should be at least 15 feet away from the rock. Crosscut saws blades should be sheathed before carrying. Chainsaws should be operated by agency personnel or skilled volunteers only. The operator must wear a hard hat, gloves, goggles, and chainsaw shaps. Other workers should be at least 15 feet away from the operator. Quality, routine trail maintenance work takes time, patience, and the desire to leave a natural looking trail when the work is finished. <laughs>